everybody, it's Elisa. I'm back. This time we are talking about the male reproductive system, and we are talking specifically about... Oh, if I can remove that. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. There it is. We are specifically talking about semen, so it's like sperm as well as some secreted elements together. Okay. Uh, semen is also referred to as seminal fluid, right? Because it's a fluid medium, and it's expelled during orgasm. Um, and so there's not a lot. It's like really a tiny bit. Like it's like two to five milliliters of fluid. So that's like a fraction of a teaspoon to like maybe a, maybe a tea, tablespoon maybe of fluid expelled during ejaculation. 60% is seminal vesicle fluid. 30% comes from the prostate and 10% is uh, going to be just sperm as well as spermatic duct secretions. So a normal sperm count, mm, normal means like average sperm count, not like a high or anything, is 50 to 120 million per milliliter. So that's a lot of cells, like a lot. A low sperm count is going to be anything that's less than 20 to 25 million per milliliter. And even though there's that many cells, which sounds like a ton of cells, it is considered infertility at this point. So there must be just like a really big jump in something right about here. Um, it'd be really interesting to find out about that. The prostate is going to be what's responsible for that milky appearance of semen, milky white fluid. The reason is because it has like a lot of ions in it. So things like calcium and citrate, and phosphate and all that other stuff includes some enzymes as well as uh, some enzymes that are going to be uh, causing proteins to be degraded. Um, right. So seminal vesicles are also going to contribute to a yellowish fluid. So it's like less, but it's still there. And what that yellowish is going to be is mainly things like fructose and carbs, energy, 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 energy for those flagella, flagella, sorry, flagella, flagella, as well as some citrate, a uh, couple of um, prostaglandins, um, prosmingolin as well, which are thought to have like different effects on receiving cells, possibly even in the female. Stickiness of semen promotes, uh, I mean, I don't know for sure, but that's in the ether, there you got it. Um, should probably check on the background of that one a little bit. But um, stickiness of the semen promotes fertilization. Uh, clotting enzyme uh, from the prostate is going to be activating this prosmingolin. It converts it to a sticky fibrin-like protein, semaglin, and so it's kind of like cross hatches and allows for that sticky kind of resistance and attachment. It entangles the sperm specifically and sticks to the inner wall of the vagina, the cervix as well. Um, and what it does is it kind of like like gives it a like a boost to the cervix so it can go into the uterus and then up to the fallopian tubes where most of the fertilization actually occurs. And it kind of helps it not drain back out into the vagina. Um, so yeah, uh, it promotes the uptake of sperm-laden clots of semen into the uterus. 20 to 30 minutes after ejaculation, a serine protease from the prostatic fluid breaks down the semenoglin and starts to liquefy the semen, kind of like lets it back out. Two requirements for sperm to move around. It needs to have a higher pH and it needs to have some carbs uh, as the energy source. The prostatic fluid buffers the vaginal acidity uh, from pH uh, pretty acidic from 3.5 all the way down to like around where blood sits at 7.5. So, um, Seminal vesicles are going to provide that sugar as well as, you know, quite a few different carbs uh, to the mitochondria that are sitting at the end, you know, kind of like right here at the tail, right there is where the mitochondria are. And so that's going to provide them that sugar. Active sperm are going to proceed up the vagina through up to the uterus and possibly into the uh, fallopian tubes as well. Prostaglandins, here it is again, in the semen may might, God, I don't know. Um, it, the research is a little thin on this, uh, but it might thin the mucus of the cervical canal and might stimulate, uh, it's thought to can stimulate waves of contractions uh, and possibly female orgasm. And those contractions um, will, would like theoretically cause like a, a muscular tidal wave peristalsis almost 
um, allowing the semen to either spread or just be pulled up further into the uterus and up to the fallopian tubes. Possibly. Okay, so endocrine disrupting chemicals, EDCs, uh, are out there uh, and they are effects of pollution um, and they are going to interfere with hormones. They bind them. They're found in a lot of stuff. So exposure comes from food, water, air, soil, chemicals and things in the house, things in your workplace. Some of these effects can be like really long lasting. And what's really scary is some of them might have epigenetic effects, meaning that like if great, great grandpa was exposed to it and then here's like great grandpa and then here's like, you know, grandpa and then here's like dad and then here's you for example if i should do this and then there it is okay yeah if greek or great grandpa had an exposure here it could be like kind of migrating and then show up again in you right and there's been some interesting studies about how epigenetics uh, has impacted individuals over multiple generations right especially uh, diabetes um, in isolated populations in Europe, very well documented stuff, some very interesting studies if you get a chance to look at epigenetics. Um, so it's really difficult to prove the link between a suspected disruptor and a reproductive disorder because here's the thing is when people say there's no evidence for something, it just means maybe because we have to wait 150 years for it to show up. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means we can't look at it now. It might be out there still. So that's why we got to invert, investigate further. So just don't let that turn of phrase um, dupe you into believing statistics are um, conclusive in some cases. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful. And I hope you're out there somewhere. Have a great day. Bye-bye.